Hi guys, this is GKCS. We are talking about the fifth problem from Code Chef, uh, October challenge, which is Chef and Cycles. So here's the problem. You have cycles, as the problem suggests, uh, and this cycle is a cycle which is weighted. So every edge in this is undirected, and each of them have weights. So let's say uh, W1, W2, W3, and so on. But this is not just the only cycle which is there. So you have n cycles, right? Each of them having size a of i, where i goes from 0 to n minus 1. Okay? Uh, and each of these cycles is connected to the next cycle. So let's say this is the zeroth cycle, then this will be connected to the next cycle, which is the first cycle or the oneth cycle, let's say, in this way. And that will have a1 number of nodes. So all direct, uh, edges are weighted and undirected. So, so on and so forth, you will have n cycles and uh, your, your main job is to take queries of the form c1, v1, c2, v2, which says in the first cycle, take vertex v1 or rather in, in cycle 1, this could be any value, this could be 3. Uh, take vertex specified over here, that could be 4 maybe, so that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, this vertex and in the in cycle mentioned here C2, so that could be the first cycle, 0, 1, 2, yeah, here, uh, choose V2, which could be 1. Now you need to find the shortest path between this node and this node, if this is your query. Okay, so you'll be given many queries like this, you'll be given Q queries. Each of this forms, C1, V1, C2, V2, and you need to answer these queries efficiently. Alright, and initially of course you're given all the weights of all the edges in every cycle along with their sizes. Okay, so how do we do this? So in terms of the diagram, this is what it is, uh, a cycle another cycle, and so on and so forth, n cycles, each one connected by one undirected edge. Okay, and that edge is of course weighted. Also, every node in the cycle is connected to the adjacent one uh, with a weighted edge. And the last node over here, 4, is connected to the 0th node with again a weighted undirected edge. So you see that every node is basically connected to every other node. There is a path. But you want to find the shortest paths for the queries that have been given to you in the same format of C1, uh, V1, C2, and V2. Okay, so let's take an example. Let's assume initially that there are no cycles. I mean, there's just one cycle that here. So let's assume this, the zeroth cycle, as the only cycle in the entire graph. Okay, you, you don't know about these things. What happens here is that if you want the distance from any node to any other node, you can pre-compute it. No big deal. Here's how you can do that. You take a prefix sum array, okay? And here you have indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Because you have up to the fourth index, you just take this prefix sum array. And what I'm going to be storing here is the distance of every node from node 0. So, uh, and not just that, the distance, not the minimum distance, the distance clockwise. You can choose anything, you can choose anti-clockwise also. I'm going to choose clockwise. So from 0 to 1, the distance is 1. 0 to 1, distance is 1. From 0 to 0, of course, the distance is going to be initialized 0. Uh, 0 to 2, what's the distance going to be? Whatever distance you had up to this point, plus this distance from 1 to 2. So 8 plus 1 gives you 9. Similarly, up to this point, you have whatever distance over here, plus 12, so that is 21. And then finally, up to 4, clockwise distance is 21 plus 5, which is 26. Now, we don't have the information for what is the distance between 0 to 4. Okay, that's not there. So, we need to store that somewhere else. Let's say, last distance, which is basically the anti-clockwise distance to the last node from 0 is also stored, which is uh, 7. 
Another thing, of course, that you can do is you can just add it to the prefix sum array, but I prefer to keep it this way because that's the implementation I used during the contest. Now, for all of these cycles, you have such prefix sum arrays. So you will have n prefix sum arrays, and each one pre computing time is the size of cycle. Okay, and there has been a constraint which is a sum of a of i does not exceed 10 raised to the power 6. So this is fine. Pre-computation uh, of all the distances is within the time complexity limit. So what you can see now is that from any point in this cycle, you can go to the other point and tell what the distance is going to be very fast. From 2 to 3, let's say, what's the distance? 21 minus 9, which gives you 13, I think. No, 12. Oh, yes, it gives you 12. I can cheat, but yeah, it gives you 12 over here also. Uh, now, if I change that to this distance from 3 to 1, what is it going to be? 20. And so you are seeing that order 1 is the time complexity requirement for any two nodes in the same cycle. Okay, let's just confirm that 12 plus 8 is 20. Okay. So you can move from one node to another node in the same cycle really fast. Which nodes are you really interested in? Well, cycle 1 and cycle 2 are going to be different. That's also one of the constraints in the problem, but you don't really need that. Why? Because within this cycle, you're going to move to the end of the cycle or to the beginning of the cycle. Okay, The beginning is the place where people move towards you. The end is from where you move out. So from the 0th cycle to the 1st cycle, this is the end, node number 2, with a particular weight. So all of the cycles have a beginning and an end, uh, and you have just two ways to traverse this query, C1, V1, C2, V2, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Okay, the same logic that you applied over here, that you either go clockwise or anti-clockwise, and therefore you pre-computed the sums, is going to be applied overall. So what do you have then? Prefix sums of cycles themselves. Okay, and I'll just take an example. In fact, there's just going to be one prefix sum of the cycle. So uh, I'll just draw it over here. Over here seems like a good place. What's the prefix sum of the first cycle? From the zero cycle going to the zero cycle takes zero. Okay, life is easy till now. Here. So what I did was store this distance from the start to the end and then store this point. So that is the distance you need to move from cycle number zero, from the start of cycle number zero, to just touch cycle number one. So that comes out to be one plus eight plus nine. But one plus eight is going to be slow. So what you want to do is from zero to two, find me the distance. From zero to two, find me the distance. Nine. So that's nine plus this distance. This is of course order one. So that is nine. So that is eighteen. Now you see that uh, the the second index in this node zero from zero to one takes you eighteen distance. Over here you want to go from three to the end, which is two actually. So again you have a prefix sum corresponding to this cycle, which will be nine. Okay, that will give you the answer 9. And 9 plus 4 is going to be the answer for this cycle, which is 13 plus. 13 plus 18 is what your answer will be. So that is uh, 21, 31. Okay, for index 2. So 0, 1, 2. Over here, you see that you are at node 1 and you need to get to node 0. The distance between these two is going to be just 1. Okay, and we will take into consideration what happens if this distance is even smaller. Okay, what if this was 0 and 0? So we, we get there, but for now we are lucky. We find that this is 1. Uh, and so what you have is 31 plus 1 plus 12. So 43, 44. 44 is the distance up to this node. And finally, do you really need to calculate the distance over here? No, you don't need to do that. But correspondingly, you calculate the last distance of the cycle. So you can say last cycle distance, which is going to be
from this point you take the anti clockwise 4 okay so uh, that will be added to end and start the distance between these two so uh, the smaller distance here is 3 plus 1 plus 2 so this is 6 6 plus 4 so last second distance is 6 plus 4 which is 10 okay so you are seeing that essentially what has happened is you had a smaller version you had one cycle you pre computed all the sums through prefix sums. You stored the last distance because you want some anti clockwise information also. And then what you did is you just took the bigger picture. You went out and you saw that none of these cycles are really, you know, they, they aren't cycles, they're basically points. So all these points can be reduced to prefix sums again. And the last cycle distance can also be taken. Okay, so using all this information, we can answer very easily. Uh, what is the distance between C1, V1, C2, V2? Okay, and you're already seeing what happens if you're going clockwise. All you need to do is go from one cycle to another cycle. So if you're going from cycle number one to cycle number four, let's say, then you need to take this distance. Okay, 44 minus 18 is going to be the distance you need, which is uh, 26. So from this cycle to this cycle, you need 26 as your distance. Apart from that, you also have V1 and V2. So from this point, how do you get to the end of this cycle? Because you're going clockwise. So from uh, V1, let's say V1 was 0. So getting to the end it takes you 3 plus 3. Okay, that is 6. So 6 plus 26 plus, let's say V2 is, uh, is 3 again. Okay, so that, that is 4 plus, uh, 4 plus 6, I think, yeah, 10. 10 is smaller than the other distance 11. So that will be plus 10 here, 36, 42. So you can very easily compute in very fast time, order one time actually. What is the distance between two points? Now this is the obvious part where you go clockwise. Finally, what happens if you have a anti-clockwise distance to calculate? Well, one of the things you can do is actually take a suffix array. That is exactly what anti-clockwise distances are and you can get the shortest amongst the two, prefix and suffix sums. Uh, but let's not get into that, let's try to save some space. What we can do is, like we said, we had the last, last cycle distance. And we also had the last distance. So we can use this information. Now, one way to calculate the distance between two nodes, let's say six and two, is to find out what's the difference between these two indexes, six and two. So that is 25 in our case. Now we see that 25 is greater than this distance, which is four plus two plus two. Okay, that would have been eight only, but we got it wrong because of the prefix array thing. What we need to do is calculate this distance then, the anti-clockwise distance. You can think of it going this way. Okay, so what you can then do is find the distance between 0 to 2, which is minimum. So that would be 0 to 2, which is 6, plus the distance between 6 and 0. But this has to be anti clockwise again. So one of the smart things you can do is ignore this part and find the length of the entire cycle. Okay. The length of the entire cycle is going to be 31 plus last distance which is 2 so that is 33 okay uh, minus the distance between 2 and 6 right that's that's one way to do it so that would be minus 31 or is it no distance between 2 and 6 so that is minus 25 so that is equal to 8 and this is one candidate distance. This is another candidate distance. What you'll be choosing, of course, is eight. And therefore, the minimum between minimum distance between two and six is going to be eight. So using this principle, you can actually extend this to the, all the cycles themselves. Each of the cycles is like a point, actually, which you're pre-computed using the prefix sums. And the entire cycles can be, again, pre-computed using the prefix sums, as we showed. So last cycle distance will tell you the total distance of the entire cycle from 0 to 6. Okay, so pretty easy question actually. Uh, the order complexity of this is order sum of 
i equal to 0 to n minus 1 a, a of i which is i think 10 is to power 6 approx so that's well within the time limit so if you have any doubts or suggestions you can leave them in the comments below uh, i have the code in the description below uh, and the next video which is going to come out is m arrays so stay tuned